This is part two of the original USS Enterprise NCC-1701, which will cover the secondary hall and interconnecting dorsal, deck nine through 24. If you haven't seen part one, check out the description box below for more information. Let's start with interconnecting dorsal, which encompass deck nine through 14. These decks were rather basic and were mainly used as an observation lounge and a way for the crew to link to the primary and secondary hall. With the exception of Deck 9, which have an auxiliary machinery room, this deck have a total lift, gangway, and lounge. On the secondary hall were Deck 15 to 24. Deck 15 was the secondary hall strong back. At the front was the pump machinery room the freshwater tanks on both the port and starboard. Visicom. And the air conditioning room for the secondary hall. Deck 16 was the medical and warp drive engineering. On the medical section was the doctor's office. Examination and operation room medical research lab, sick bay, dental office, and medical supply room. At the aft end was the cosmic ray shield, inspection corridor, and shuttlecraft hangar. The shuttle bay or shuttlecraft hangar was the largest internal area of the ship and housed two shuttlecraft, storage facility, and maintenance equipment to service the shuttle. In the engineering section was the engineering computer, which controlled the ship's massive power. Much of the ship's power came from focusing of matter and antimatter through the lithium crystal. The power generated in the engineering section was moved quickly and efficiently to subsystem all across the ship. Near the computer was the turbo elevator repair section, maintenance shop, and Jeffrey tube, which were located on the port and starboard of the Enterprise. The Jeffrey tube lead into the main propulsion unit and internal steps help crew members climb along the tube. Once inside the tube, the technician could maneuver themselves to the required location using a pair of bars mounted on either side. Hey, I'll put the equipment away. See you in the rec room, huh? You got a deal, friend. All right. Hello. Deck 17 was the crew's quarters and observation gallery. Two control booths were located toward the aft of the hangar deck, close to the shutter bay doors and observation gallery from where the ground crew could monitor incoming and outgoing ships. This is the uh, observation deck, that's the flight deck down there, with the shuttlecraft. Interesting. Isn't it? Additional crew's quarters. And toward the front was the Botany High Bay and three mess rooms throughout the floor. On deck 18 was the Botany section and crew's quarters, which included the hydroponic lab and Botany section. Cruise quarters, mess room, and hangar doors. Further down was deck 19, which was the bridge, ship's computer, and hangar deck. Toward the back was the hangar deck, which includes the spot landing target and turnable elevator. When not in use, the circular pad at the center of the shuttle bay was used to fuel the shuttlecraft immediately when needed. This landing pad could rotate 360 degrees, allowing the crew to position a newly arrived shuttlecraft for the next mission after landing. In addition, the hangar deck also had a flush cargo hold hatch and a hangar door, and further up was the security section. The Galileo was designed for a short-range journey and could accommodate up to seven crew members. 
It could be piloted by a single officer and was suitable for a scientific mission and transportation of personnel, but had a limited amount of fuel. It had a length of 6.7 meters or 22 feet and a height of 2.4 meters or 8 feet. At front and center was the bridge for the secondary hall, which also includes the ship's computer, briefing room, and cruise quarters. One of the more interesting deck was Deck 20, the recreational facility and shuttlecraft maintenance shop. This deck included the swimming pool with the sun deck and recreational area. On the port side were the gymnasium, the locker rooms, and shower rooms. At the center was two emergency battery rooms and two general utility rooms. Next to the battery room was the deck elevator landing area and the shuttlecraft maintenance shop where the Galileo Type 7 was repaired and maintained. Toward the aft end of Deck 20 were the hangar doors operating machinery flats and deck hatches for loading and unloading cargo from the hangar deck. As we head down to Deck 21, we can find the Exotic Food Preparation Center and Bowling Alley. Situated at the back was the seating accommodation for 83 people, two refreshment areas, and the Bowling Alley. Next to the bowling alley were the exotic and basic foods and beverage preparation facilities, materials reclamation facilities, pool maintenance machinery room, and ship's laundry. Deck 22 was the fabrication facility where you can find the sanitary waste recovery system at the front. two emergency transporters, refrigerated and frozen raw material storage along the side of the ship. At the back was the non-organic metallic fabrication, organic fabrication, non-organic non-metallic fabrication, and manual food preparation section. Found on deck 23 was the cargo and storage facility where the tractor beam machinery room was placed the tractor being locked on to incoming vessel to guide it safely into the shuttle bay. Along the side of the ship were raw material storage area and a cargo transporter. And finally, the last deck was deck 24, bottom hall and cargo hall where the cargo gallery and main tractor beam were located. After spending a few weeks monitoring the original Enterprise, I have noticed a few oddities and things that weren't mentioned from the original blueprints. First was the asymmetric design of the main bridge by 36 degrees. This was probably done for the sake of camera angles and composition. It was easier to set up the shot of people entering and leaving the bridge. In addition, the decompression chamber was left out from the blueprints. More importantly, the Enterprise inherited many of the rules that go in form and functions. Most of the crew's quarter had a restroom and a working area. Each deck had an elevator and gangway. It had a food preparation area, recreation area, gym, mess room, and lounges to keep the crews entertained while off duty. These are essential during a long mission in space. These blueprints were the only original 1701 Enterprise that were ever endorsed by the Star Trek company and approved by Gene Roddenberry. My job as a 3D animator is to bring a 2D schematic made back in the 1970s and bring it to life, but also captures a charm and beauty that only a fan of the Star Trek can truly appreciate. It continued to define and inspire a generation of designers, creators, engineers, and physicists to think the impossible and to boldly go where no man has gone before. Hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the original Enterprise. If you have noticed anything that wasn't mentioned on the blueprint, 
feel free to leave a comment below. And if you want to know more about the Enterprise D or Voyager, check out my playlist on the right hand corner. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.